So this was really a great session, and I have the privilege to do a wrap-up, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> because, um, you know, this was much too good. I can't make it better. So I'm not going to spoil it. Um, but I will do something. Um, I think that I'm not going to say much about this session because it's still too fresh in our minds um, and we need to digest it. Um, and I'm not going to ruin this for you. You all need to digest it in your own way and I don't want to superimpose my own uh, takeaways. But what I decided to do is to give you a, um, a small digest of yesterday's um, uh, session because that's already history, right? Um, our brains have already had a whole night to remember what was said and what we think is important and what we want to remember. So I thought that it would be okay if I gave you a cartoon-like impression of our day one. So look at the slides, not at me. <laughs> um, yeah. So you will remember these pictures that you see there. That's fast research and slow research, or fast archives and slow archives. Two worlds that exist side by side and live at a different pace. And the notion of pace came back in Anya's talk, which was titled Fast Forward and Keeping Up with the Changing Research Environment. And she wondered if we were moving too fast, taking on new roles and trying, on, trying out new ways to serve research. And Antal used the analogy of gear shifting in research. So here you see the physicist in, in the sixth gear and the humanist in the fourth gear. <laughs> Innovation is about stopping things as well as starting things. This was probably the most tweeted observation of our meeting. And in general, we talked a lot about new and old, big and small, short cycles and long tails, and the diversity of our support services, and with different gravity, as Jim observed today. And I think Ricky summed it up quite nicely. She said, one size does not fit all. This was also um, in agreement that what we, we thought that librarians and researchers should work more closely together. <laughs> Anya said, we have to be embedded in research. <laughs> and Ricky took it a step further when she talked about immersing ourselves with researchers and finding out what they cherish and what they lack. Adam had a more platonic relationship in mind when he said that we need to co-evolve services and methods together with researchers. Antal felt he was on the mirror side of the conversation. From his perspective, libraries were pushing their services to tidy up the mess of research data. But researchers were not really bothered by chaos or a messy desk, as we heard from Natasha during the workshop. Actually, the more data, the better. And they were quite happy to let the data be crowdsourced. Why not? He said, after all, researchers also trust their students to work on their stuff. It was the meeting of the magic buttons for the wary researcher, like Lynn, Lynn reminded us again today. And this was the picture of the day. Put the researcher back in the center. The person who gets to push the buttons and who gets the control over research, assessment as well. No longer the subject of scrutiny and evaluation, but the full-blown quantified self. But will the researcher be even able to self-identify? The system has given researchers so many profiles and identifiers, and it has broken loose. It is unstoppable. It just keeps on assigning numbers. Thank God, help is on its way, as all librarians in Europe are joining hands to bring research data in the open air. 
So that was my little sketch for you. And um, I'm making fun of us. <laughs> Um, but seriously, we did a great job, I think. And I think we are all very proud of ourselves. And we will go home very satisfied. Um, we have shared our dreams and uh, our dreams for better support services and also our very real practices on the very bumpy road, like John Scully said. So I wish you um, a good journey home. Uh, but before that, Two things. We are going on a canal tour for those who have registered, and I hope many of you have. And we will have lunch on the boat. It will start at 12.30. So if you could um, come at the lobby downstairs of the hotel around quarter past 12, then we can slowly, slowly walk there. Actually, it's just opposite the doors. <laughs> we'll have to walk very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second message is that we will also have a meeting next year, Merrily, isn't it? You wanted me to say that already. Yes. yes. And it will be in San Francisco. Yes. Right. So we would really w welcome you very, very much in uh, San Francisco next year. We will give more announcements about this later on. Thank you very much.